little circuit boards. Dead circuit boards. They're our favourite type. These are out of twinkly lights. Let me zoom down because they are very, very small. But these are out of the Twinkly Festoon. Now, Twinkly is a brand of addressable lights that can be pixel mapped with your phone. And they're quite high profile. They have a big curtain of them locally um, in the sort of town centre area here. And uh, they had a design flaw or a manufacturing flaw with their uh, Festoon lights where the original O-ring that the globe screws in against was 1.5 millimetre thick. And the new one that they're sending out is 2mm, and that tiny little gap that was left allowed water and it's caused corrosion of many of the circuit boards. It's not a huge mega issue because they can supply replacement circuit boards, and you literally pull what's left of the original one out and you can plug the new one in. But it's important to note that every single circuit board has an address. Effectively, this is uh, light number two, and they're all on a parallel bus, which is quite interesting because of the way they're addressed. So let's take a look at the circuit board in a larger format. The circuit board looks like this because I've already taken a picture of one. It has the address there, number two, and then I thought these were going to be addressable LEDs because um, I saw a brief glimpse of the circuit board before uh, Kip Hake sent me them to take a look at, Kip Hake's. I thought these were going to be addressable LEDs but instead, they're just standard 50-50 LEDs, all wired in series. It's a 24-volt supply, and they've got six LEDs, so that adds up to around about 18-ish volts. If we take a look at the other side of the circuit board, we have this very clever little chip. This is why it's got such a low pin, out that I, pin count that I thought that those must be addressable LEDs. All these are just designed for the decoding of the data that's being sent over the power lines. And then this will just basically be a microcontroller with the power lines uh, and then like the data receiving pins and then one serial output to the other side. But it is not that. This is a very clever little chip. So these Zener diodes are effectively in series with the strings of LEDs. I thought there was some fancy reason for that, but it appears to be just to pack up the voltage of the LEDs to reduce power dissipation because this also regulates the current through the LEDs. This chip is powered from the 24 volt rail via a Zener diode, but also there's a resistor in parallel, and then there's a little shunt resistor across that where you might almost normally expect to find a capacitor. After that, there are two, um, in this case, 8.2K resistors, but uh, 20K resistors in the older PCBs, and they go from the positive pin to the a couple of these pins, the output pins, and I think they may actually be part of the, um, the actual data reception, but it's very hard to say. Let me show you the schematic. For reference, the bits that had failed in these waterlogged circuit boards were the resistors. And there are only one, two, three, four resistors. So if you actually probe them and find the ones that have failed, you should possibly be able to get your lights back up and working. So the O-ring, for a start, the outside diameter, it's very hard measuring a squishy rubber ring without the proper tools, but it's around about 23 millimetres outside diameter. The old one was 1.5 millimetre thick. The new one is 2 millimetre thick, just to make that tighter seal. The circuitry has... All the LEDs, I should have drawn sort of like little sort of like beams of light coming out, shouldn't I? But having said that, they're coloured, so you know they're LEDs. But it has the LEDs wired in series sets of six. Then there's these Zener diodes, and I was wondering what they were for. I reckon they're just to pack the voltage up, get it as close to 24 volts within reason as possible. Because the red LEDs have the lowest forward voltage. So they've got the highest value, Zener. The green of the next uh, lowest forward voltage. So um, they've got a lower value, Zener. And then, of course, the blue is the highest voltage. So uh, it's got the uh, 5.6 volts, you know, it's a lower vo voltage one. And I think that's just purely because any voltage they can drop across the LEDs in the Zener doesn't have to be dropped across the current regulator on the chip. And that little Zener there is going to take a, a bit of significant dissipation away from this chip. Oddly, these two 8.2K, or on the old ones, 20K resistors, are connected to these pins as well. So they must be doubling up as inputs and able, maybe, to measure the voltage in the 24-volt rail, which I think dips, but dips very fast and decisively to actually send the data. Um, there, it's interesting to note there is a petition for a third resistor, 
uh, going to the positive in the red input. The power supply for the chip, there's no decoupling capacitor, which is also very strange. But having said that, this might be down to the fact that they want to be able to reset all the chips very quickly, perhaps, or get a stable reset. And also, they don't want any sort of capacitance across the lines because that would mean they couldn't transmit the data across it. So there is a zener diode. So 24 volts minus the 15 volts gives across this resistor, gives about 9 volts to the chip. When the voltage dips below the point that that will be active, I would guess, uh, current can still flow through this resistor and actually provide power to the chip to keep it awake, even when the actual the power line is dipping up and down. I know some people have tried to reverse engineer the Twinkly protocol. I don't know if they've been successful yet, but it does appear that it sends an address for each particular um, pixel, and then it gives the red, green, blue information, but it can looks as though it can address them randomly within it. It's not like a serial string, because it is just two lines going, the 24-volt line with the data and the common 0-volt line. Uh, it also looks like this chip here probably is programmed with the... Um, with the address of the LED. I wonder if they do that during manufacture. I wonder if they just literally have a batch of PCBs that are numbered two and they have that particular chip and a number batch PCBs numbered 16 and they have that particular chip. Uh, hard to say, I don't know if it's programmed in situ. There are some interesting Chinese LEDs with four pins that you can, uh, initially you can program an address into LED and then bridge the pins together and just treat it as a two pin LED and it is addressable. But they're kind of uh, odd. But anyway, that is it. So if you want to repair your twinkly LEDs, if you're, I mean, the manufacturer has been very good in supplying spare PCBs and the O-rings, but you have to tell them uh, which PCB numbers have failed. But if you end up uh, out of warranty or whatever, and you're trying to repair them, then these resistors, uh, check them. Um, if you can see this is the common positive pin that is connected to all these resistors that are going to the, the input pins. But then it's also to the Zener and this one. So you can check continuity from that pin because these pins seem to be corroding as well because they're carrying the bulk of the uh, voltage differential and the current flowing across them with the water in it. Uh, but uh, you can do a continuity check to these to see if they're okay. And you can potentially, the negative is just connected to two connections. Um, and ultimately, these connect to the LEDs on the other sides, and the positive also connects to the LEDs on the other sides. Um, the other thing to check once you've tested those are all valid or bridge them if they're not, check the value of the resistor. If the resistor has gone open circuit, as many of these ones had where they'd been uh, soaked in water, then you can basically just desolder them and put a new resistor in. I suppose, really, given the amount of room. No, that's kind of on the back, so there's not a lot of room. It would have to be a surface mount resistor. But... Um, these resistors seem to have been the prime culprits. All the Zener diodes were fine. The chip looked fine. It was just the resistors and the sort of connector pins that had failed. So that's how you could potentially uh, repair your twinkly lights. Good stuff. Uh, they're quite an interesting product. But there we have it. Um, it's fixable and it's quite unexpected and interesting circuitry.